Oh. Are you fart? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just like we promised, we are doing the Q&A. Sorry about the lighting, it's nighttime, and there really is no time during the day that we can do this, because kids. So, they're all asleep, here goes nothing. Except this one. Except that one. <laughs> Betsy. Say hi, Beck. Oh, Beck, boy. look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> He's just staring at Daddy. Are you ready? This gets hot and heavy. Hi, Bexie. I've seen a lot of these um, Q and A's, and most times, people either have a laptop or it's on their cell phone. But old school. How did you and Maxine meet? You can answer this one. By me. I'll answer it. How did we meet? Um, our initial contact, I guess, was on Facebook, right? No. Are you sure? Oh, we met at the bar. We met through friends. So my friend from my hometown was dating your friend. From here. Yeah. And we went out to a bar one night and he saw you mm -hmm. and kind of introduced us. And um, I was like so not interested at first. <laughs> and um, so we literally just said hi the first time, right? Yeah. And then, I don't think we talked. Yeah, I think yeah, I was just and then, Yeah. And then some, some of the girls um, who I was like hanging out with, they were like, he just got out of a really long relationship. Um, and, oh, he, you know, he's so, he's so handsome to, <laughs> he's definitely just like hooking up with girls and he's not really, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> he's not looking for a relationship basically. And so I remember thinking like, oh, don't worry, I'll make that happen. And so then I think I messaged you. No, I like sent a smiley face on yeah. one of your pictures on or something. It's on Facebook, right? And then you... And then, and then you went back through like really old pictures of mine and like commented mm. and liked them. Mm -hmm. Some might call that Facebook stalking. And so then we hung out for a little bit. Some stuff happened in between there <laughs> and we stopped talking. And then um, we started talking again. I had friends who had a house in Philly, yeah, and, and I, I was there like every single weekend. I went with my friend Jess, um, and we came and hung out with you guys. The rest, is, the history. rest is history. Question number two. This is like a three-parter. Why did you have to go to Arizona for your pregnancy? How long were you in Arizona? And how hard was it being away from your three oldest, our three oldest? No, I've had a lot of people ask me this too. And the reason that we went to Arizona was because... Um, I was getting cervical checks every two weeks. No, every week. Yeah, every two weeks, right? Yeah. yeah. Or was it every week? It was every two weeks at every first. I think at the end there, it was yeah, two weeks Yeah, once I was already there. Yeah. So every two weeks I was getting cervical checks and my cervix was good like the whole time until I hit um, 21 and a half weeks. And when I went for that appointment, my cervix had like drastically shortened. And so... Um, the doctors here basically were like, you know, there's nothing that we can really do. We just kind of have to wait and see. And hopefully, you know, your cervix holds until at least the babies are viable. Um, that I wasn't comfortable doing that. So I said that I wanted a cerclage um, and really pushed for it. And so the doctors um, agreed to do it. So we went into hospital that night and we were going to do the cerclage in the morning. Um, and the doctors... Um, did some tests and I tested positive for FFN, which is basically means it's like a protein found in your um, cervix and your, uh, I guess it's like your uterus, um, which like a lot of times will indicate preterm labor. And so the doctor said that she didn't feel comfortable doing the cerclage and that we kind of had to wait and see what happened. Um, and that was not something that I was comfortable with. I wasn't gonna just wait and see if my baby survived. Um, so I wanted to do everything possible to give them, uh, the best chance. So I'm actually part of a quad moms group on Facebook and I reached out to everyone on there and just like, you know, asked for advice. And a lot of the moms on there recommended a doctor in Arizona. He's like a specialist. He's delivered like 400, um, sets of quads and like multiple sextuplets and quintuplets. And he really specializes in, um, multiple births 
And so I called him and he immediately called me back that night and we talked for like an hour on the phone and he was willing to work with my doctors here, but they weren't willing to work with him. And so Jake and I literally said to each other, you know, the only thing that matters at this point is that the babies survive. Um, and so we knew it was crazy, but we thought that it was the best chance for them. And so we went out there the next day and you know, it seemed crazy, but looking back on it now, it was the absolute best decision. It was a Friday that we made that decision. We were Saturday we flew out. Yeah. Um, it was definitely the best decision that we've ever made. And a lot of people will say like, well, why didn't you just go to a doctor closer to you? And I think multiple reasons. I was panicked. I wanted to trust someone and I knew that he's probably the most experienced multiples doctor in the country. Also because of the coronavirus, a lot of the doctors around us in Jersey and in Pennsylvania, you know, Philadelphia and even New York, they weren't accepting new patients. That was another reason. Oh, buddy. We knew it was crazy, but what was important was having the baby survive. So that's what we did. And then how hard was it being away from your three oldest? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely hard being away from them, but we knew that they were in good hands and they were all having so much fun. So it wasn't as hard as if, you know, they were with like a babysitter or something. Yeah. They were all with family. So we felt comfortable. They were all happy and having fun, so. A couple of these questions we got while you were still pregnant. Yeah. But I still thought that they would be interesting to answer. What is or was your goal for your pregnancy as far as how long you wanted to stay pregnant for? 28 weeks, 30 weeks. What was your goal? Yeah, you should just hold them. Should I just answer this? So um, initially when we had talked to the doctors, um, they said that the average. Theo. Theo's joined the party. So I think I kind of thought of it in like little milestones. My first goal was definitely 24 weeks because that's, you know, when you hit viability and I knew that they could survive then, they would have a chance to survive then at 24 weeks. Oh. My second goal was 28 weeks because that's, you know, the average for quads. Um, so 28 weeks was my second goal. And in my head, I always had 34 weeks as a lofty goal. And that was also my doctor's goal for us. Um, but I was always going to be happy with 30 weeks. I think that was like what we said the whole time was like, I really, really want to get to 30 weeks. Um, so we got to 30 weeks and I was really you know, happy with that. And anything after that was honestly just like icing on the cake. Yeah. You know, it was just like a bonus. Um, so getting to 32 weeks, I was, you know, pretty happy with that. Um, and then we had to deliver at 32 weeks because Theo had some cord flow restriction issues um, so that we all just thought it was better to deliver um, versus risking, you know, going to 34. So and we met our goal, which is good. And so. Can you just take the stuff out of the oven too? I mean, yeah, you could be hungry. What does you go for your pregnancy? You want to answer this next one? Are any of the kids identical? Mm, no. Oh, you didn't stop? Mm -hmm. okay. Uh. okay, next question. Can you provide a timeline for when all of your kids came into your lives because the dozens of articles about your family conflict with each other? Yeah, that's true. Um, it is true. I'll start a little beforehand. So Jake and I got married um, in May of 2016. Then in 2017, um, we started our foster um, journey. We started it, uh, I think it was like April or May. And we were approved by July. The kids came to us on July 28th, Aiden, P, Parker, um, and Connor. And then not even a month later, we got a call for Elle, Elliot. Um, and what was the exact day that we picked her up? August 28th, August 29th. Yeah. 
Um, and so we picked her up from the NICU. We had Henry in 2018. We adopted the kids in December of 2019. And then we found out we were pregnant with the quads like a month later. Mm -hmm. um, so we found out we were pregnant with them. I think it was like the end of January, beginning of February. Um, and then they were born in July of 2020. Hopefully that clears things up. Yeah, because a lot of people thought that we had Henry first and then we got the kiddos. Um, and that's not true. We had them first, then we had Henry, then we adopted them. For quite some time, too. Then we had the quads. Yeah, because it was July of 17 when we yeah. fostered them. And then it was October of 18 that we, that we had, had Henry. Henry. So yeah. it was over a year. Next. How long did you foster your kids before adoption? Two and a half years because yeah. it was... Just like we said, July of 17 and then December of 19 is when we adopted. So almost exactly two and a half years. Two and a half years. How do the older kids like having the quads home? Has it been an adjustment? Honestly, the kids love the babies. I mean, Aiden and P especially, they ask to hold them every single night. Um, and literally every night, P will say, I'm going to put hand sanitizer on because I want to touch the babies <laughs> before I go to bed. Um, so they love them and you know, it's our responsibility as parents to parent our kids. Like we don't want them to feel like they have to help with the younger ones. Um, we're their parents. They're not their parents. Okay. So we took a break to eat something really quick and we swapped out babies. Cecilia? Yeah, they're rotating. Sass. Fussy. He's being fussy. And I think I was a tad bit hangry. This is like their witching hour as people call it. So they're super fussy at night. So... You hear him. Let's continue. This is a funny one. Why do you joke that Elliot is your soulmate? I think, um, so the kids came to us, like we said, um, July 28th. And I guess a few months prior to that, we had started trying um, to have a baby. And because I have PCOS, like it just wasn't working. Like I, I wasn't ovulating on my own, so we were having to do um, fertility treatment. And we had done some IVFs, one IVF, but we had mm -hmm. done multiple embryo transfers. Um, and I got pregnant twice when we did IVF. We lost the babies. Um, and so then we did, did like a couple of like timed intercourse cycles. And again, like they didn't work. I think I had a chemical pregnancy. I think we also did an IUI, didn't we? Yeah, we might've done like one IUI yeah. initially before we did IVF, I think. Um, and so, like, it was just, like, a really dark time in our lives, I think. Um, and, like, there were times where I wondered, like, are we going to have a biological child? You know, is this even, like, meant for us? Um, and so we got the kids. The kids came to us um, July 28th. And then when we picked up L, I just feel like instantly, like, when I saw her, we just kind of like had a connection and it's hard to explain because you know when the older kids came to us they still had so many memories we loved them and but we thought it was just temporary mm -hmm. um because their parents were still having visits and stuff um so we thought that we were just a temporary place for them well, at that point they kind of it's like hard to explain but they had parents you know um whereas with l we were her only parents at that point um and I, and I always say that like, she was the, my light in like a really dark time. Um, because I felt like it didn't matter to me if we had a biological child, like I didn't care if at we had point, a biological yeah. child at that point. I think it is hard, hard to explain though, because I yeah. think really a lot of it as well was kind of how it, she adored you like you could just tell yeah i feel like she kind of like it was just a really dark time for me and she like with every like smile and every time that she needed me and every time she like laughed and looked at us i feel like a little piece of like my heart was like mended but she almost like reached into like this dark hole that i was in i always get like emotional talking about her <laughs> you know when she like pulled me out I feel like of that space you know so yeah I mean we're just we're really close so that's why we're soulmates sorry, sorry honey 
<laughs> That's my girl. That's my girly girl. You're my girly too, Cecilia. My chubs. My chubs, bunny. You want to see hi, bunnies? Say hi, bun. Hello. <clears throat> Next. Do you guys have a daily routine for the kids? I think we have like an overall routine that we generally follow, um, but we're not really that strict about it. And I think that, you know, because none of them are in school right now. I think also because of my work schedule. Yeah. It kind of makes it difficult. Yes, they're not in school. Aiden's doing online school. So that makes things a bit more difficult as far as having a routine. <laughs> So Jake is tending to back. He's crying. Um, oh, Silas. Yeah, so anyway, we wake up around 7, 7.30. Feed the babies their bottles. Feed the big kids breakfast. Aiden will hop on some Zoom calls and do his homework. Um, we do school with P and Connor and L. Um, and then generally we'll go for a walk or, um, you know, play out back with Henry and Elle while the other kids are doing their school. And then... Beck's back. Aw, <laughs> Becky boy. We have lunch, and we put Elle and Henry down for naps, and Connor and P generally will watch TV in the basement or, you know, have some relaxing time while they're napping. And then, um... Welcome to Quap Life, guys. <laughs> it's our life. Um, so then, generally, after they wake up, we play out front a lot um, when they're up from their naps. Like, we'll go for a walk or ride bikes out front. Um, we've been taking all everyone for walks, even the babies. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not a strict schedule. Our kids always for the most part do go to bed between 6 30 and 7. Um, Aiden stays up a little bit later until like 7 30 8 o'clock um, and yeah it's pretty much our schedule and then we're up we try to get the quads up to bed around like 9 30 10. So 9 30 10 and then we feed them one last time so that hopefully we can get like a solid two to three hours before they wake up again to feed. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Do you guys have help? I think that um, for the most part, we do do it ourselves. Like we haven't had help through the night. I know a lot of people, um, you know, will have some help with their feedings and stuff. And, and we haven't um, had help as far as that goes, which, you know, we just manage like well ourselves. And honestly, it's been, I don't want to jinx us, but it's been easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I think that's because the babies are generally really good babies. Jake's mom will come and take Elle and Henry like a couple mornings a week just to give them some special time. And, um, you know, that's when like we can get, you know, some stuff done while the quads are napping. And then my mom will come, you know, on the weekends sometimes and hang out with the older kids. So I feel like now that the babies are born, we don't have that much help. Um, not that it's not offered. We just um, haven't really needed it as much. But while I was in Arizona, I mean, we had so much help. They had our older kids for, you know, two months. And my mom was out in Arizona with us. Um, so we had a ton of help then. My sister helped. Uh, my sister watched our kids. So, yeah, we are really grateful for all the help that we have received. Um, from our family. The kid's um, biological aunt has, um, she stayed here at the house with them. We're really close with them. And um, their biological grandparents had Aiden for some of the summer. Um, so yeah, we've had lots of help, when, especially when I was in Arizona. How did you pick the baby's names? Is there a story behind them? I guess we, we can go even to like our other kids' names because I've gotten a lot of questions about did we rename our adopted kids? Um, and the answer to that would be, um, we honestly gave Aiden and P a choice. 
Um, so Aiden wanted to keep his first name, Aiden, um, and he wanted to change his middle name. So we kind of like talked over names that we all liked and he ended up picking Rhodes. Um, and then with P, when she came to us, she was, we, we always just called her P. P was short for Peanut. Um, so she, the only name that she ever knew was P. Um, and so we thought that it made more sense to give her a P name and she wanted to change her first name. Um, so we all came up with a list of P names and she picked Parker. Um, and then Ren is her middle name and we did that after my mom, whose name is Karen. Um, so that's her name, Parker Wren. And then with Connor, um, Connor actually was diagnosed with autism. Um, and he had just learned his name. Um, and we liked the name Connor. And also we thought that it would be really challenging for him to learn, um, a new name because he had just started school. His middle name is Wells. And that's just a name that Jake and I really liked. So Connor Wells. And as far as L. Um, we had always called her L, um, and so then we just gave her the name Elliot, um, which is a name that I've always liked, and her middle name is Grace, and that's after Jake's mom, um, Grace. And then, as far as the quads and Henry, um, Henry is a name that we just liked. It was like one of our favorite boys' names, and so we just picked Henry, and, um, Ellis, is again just a name that we really liked um it was actually we were thinking about elias so henry elias um but jake really liked ellis the quads we always liked silas and there was this one time that i saw um someone use ledger as a middle name and we fell in love with that that was like the name that we always knew we were going to give one of the boys if, it, if one of the quads was a boy was um, Silas Ledger. Yeah, and then I just, I really like the name Theo, not Theodore, but just Theo. And so we did, um, we liked Alexander with that. So Theo Alexander. And then Beck was the one that we were like the most unsure about. Like we had like some other names, like we liked Ford and um, Tobias, right? I think was another name that we liked. Um, but Ultimately, we decided on Beck, and Jake really liked the name Killian. He actually wanted Killian as a first name, but I liked Beck better, so I went with Beck, Killian. And then Cecilia, from you know the day that Jake and I had talked about having kids, was always gonna be our girl's name. Um, so we went with Cecilia for that, and um, Hudson, I really liked, I just went with it, and all the other girls kind of have, you know, names that could be a boy or a girl and so Hudson is also like that you know it could be a boy or a girl so yeah there's no real meaning behind the quads names we're gonna have to cut this one short guys so unfortunately I did have to go into work so we had to cut that Q&A short and I know that there were a lot more questions that we hoped we could answer but thankfully we will be doing more of these and I think also like a more of a, um, a variation of these as well where We'll both answer questions. We'll have a mommy edition, and we'll have a daddy edition, um, and we'll kind of see where those go. I do apologize for having to cut this one short, but for our first Q&A, not bad. We started off strong, I think, and slowly the wheels started to fall off. What do you expect? Mm -hmm.